There is nothing more thrilling and exciting than to see the national side playing good rugby. Good rugby is achieved by well-developed individual and unit skills being expressed through teamwork by very fit players. <coughs> At national level, we expect to see skillful players, and all too often we forget that such skills have to be acquired and developed from a very early age. The fact is that our national sides of today reflect dedicated work put in by players and coaches over many years. The principles of coaching are well established. What I want to talk about in this video is how a better knowledge and greater use of training and coaching aids will help players improve their levels of fitness and skill. Physical fitness is something which many coaches believe is the direct responsibility of players. Very often a question of a player's match fitness can influence selection and the fact is that by employing fitness testing methods it is possible to establish how fit players are and what's more important agree with them a program of fitness training at Swansea recently the Welsh squad underwent a series of fitness tests appropriate to the game the idea being to determine each individual's level of fitness Run by J.J. Williams, ex-Wales and British Lion, and international Olympic gold medalist Lynn Davis, the program consisted of measuring a player's performance over a series of different tests, such as 50-meter rolling starts, flat-out sprints test a player's ability to make short, explosive runs, an all-important factor in so many areas of play. Each performance was monitored by coaching staff shuttle runs covering 120 meters in all, test power, physical agility, and again personal performances were measured against the clock. The 600 meter run is a test of fitness and ability to sustain speed and achieve personal best times over distance, and there was no lack of encouragement to make best times. Come on, put the work in now over this first 400. You can't make it up in the last 200. Put the work in, in the first 400 meters. Come on. Body suppleness is an important ingredient in rugby. This was also tested. Yes, very good. 19, that is a good score. Weightlifting is a much neglected area of fitness. It is probably the quickest way of gaining strength and power essential to the game. While this exercise and test develops and measures the strength of thigh muscles. Each player's performance was recorded in order that individual training programs could be devised and targets set and progress monitored. This information is important when selectors come to pick the team. Mike Griffiths. Mike? Jonathan Griffiths. 45. Performance is measurable. And when fitness or technique is lacking, performance suffers. Jonathan, you tackle the question of fitness and defining standards of fitness in your training sessions, don't you? Yes. Firstly, by using the grid in a controlled way, we can ensure everybody is capable of performing against a defined workload for a specified period of time. As you have seen, the hydraulic attachment also can be used to measure a defined performance. We also encourage players to improve their own standards of fitness. In the grid situation, a universal master is fitted with a single head and is used to develop power running and promote fitness. Another aid I have developed for the same purpose is a simple harness by which one player can apply a workload for his colleague to exercise against. My power runner is simple to use, ideal for developing power running, and has the added benefit of bringing second player involvement into what is normally an individual activity. It's also useful for coaching and running techniques.
Fine, well done. I remember your harness being used at the Swansea weekend. We started by recognizing that skills and fitness at the international level of the game are very much dependent upon a healthy state of coaching and fitness awareness at school and grassroots level. I believe coaching aids can enhance coaching performance when they are used regularly and with careful thought and planning. On the question of fitness, it is still largely the case that players must provide their own motivation, but we must make sure that they have every help and facility to achieve and sustain fitness before and throughout the season. We are a nation with a great history of achievement at the highest levels of the game, but we must recognize that other nations are developing the game within their own populations, and often these are many times greater than that of Wales. That we have the young material is without doubt, but the message for all of us is that we must give full attention to skill and fitness from an early stage in the development of our future international players. That is, if we want to stay with the leading nations in world rugby. Now, do you want to be the best in the world or do you want to be the best in Wales? And there's a big difference, isn't there? There's a huge difference. <laughs> I've got a little cutting there, which I kept, uh, which describes Gary Wetton. And there's a paragraph in there which I've marked. It says, Wetton has four separate consecutive programs for his pre-season work alone. Basic weights, explosive and rugby skills are his own labels. He constantly monitors his body fat ratio, his blood oxygen levels. I have to know where I am with my fitness at any, any stage, he says. And the main thing is to understand what is happening to your body and to realize there is no way out, there is no help. You have to put the work in yourself. Now that's one of the greatest rugby players in the world saying that. And at the end of the day, it comes down to attitude. How much do you want to do it?